This is Samantha, Brittany, DJ, and Levante. Today is May 13, 2008, and we'll be interviewing Ram Graham and Rev. Uh, we all know you as Rev and Graham, but can you tell us your formal names? I'm Betty Horde, or it's my maiden name, Robinson. I'm James J. Robinson. When did you first come to Manchester? See, we came to uh, Manchester to Bidwell Church as a pastor in 1962. That was our first time to look at Manchester, to see Manchester. What did Manchester look like then? Oh boy. The area was changing rapidly in 1962. When blacks move into an area, you'll have change. And that's what happened when we first came into Manchester. But there were also, uh, there were two Catholic churches, uh, Lutheran Church, uh, two Presbyterian churches, one, one beside Bidwell, uh, uh, let's see, stores. Describe the changes you have seen over the years. The area soon became 85 to 90 percent black over a period of uh, five years after we were here. So let me just say that it was at first in 1963 and four and five, the civil rights and the blacks wanting a place in this society started so that there was um, um, riots. Um, there was a riot here. Uh, we were under martial law for a while. Martial law meaning the National Guard comes in. But those were the civil rights days. He was the, in the middle of it. He being James. Can you tell us about the racial tensions and the protests in Manchester in the late 1960s? Well, 1967, we moved down here. And people were moving out just by the boatloads. Um, and we bought an old house, and it's a great big old house, and um, we moved in there. A little boy was shot next door to us. He was 12 years old, his name was Caldwell, and that caused a riot, and it was about, for about five hours, out on our corner on Manhattan and Pennsylvania, where there were about, I'd say 500 tactical police, and, um, black people. Uh, and from then on, things got pretty bad. During that time, slum landlords began to let their property go down. There was a lot of houses that were mansions, beautiful houses. Whites moved out. Landlords began to break these big houses down into apartments because they had 20 rooms. They would stack them up to get more rent and the housing become to be slums. So the ministers uh, began to form an organization called the Citizens Clergy Coordinating Committee. Led by Bidwell Church. Led by Bidwell Church. But pastors, both Catholic, Lutherans, Presbyterians. And we took on the group who ran all of the housing in Pittsburgh named Ritter Rosfeld, and we fought him, and we drew in a lot of people in there to pick it. And that's what you did in those days. You brought pressure on people. So we picketed the different places where people owned property. And so we ended up getting a housing court, which is now still in existence. When and why did you start in YDC? It was called the uh, Bidwell Education Music and Recreation Center. No, and Bid Bidwell Music. No, no, the Bu Bidwell Music Education and Recreation Center. And uh, it, was, it was put together because there was no place for recreation. So the gymnasium, as you see it now, was a plumbing warehouse. It was an old plumbing warehouse. And Bidwell Church and our denomination called the Pittsburgh Presbyterian.
secretary put about $450,000 into it and revamped it. Some of the people who work there grew up here, like Pam Wright, Kara, Chris, Brown, uh, uh, Cassetti, Jamal, Jamal when this place started out very early. They were just young children. It was a place where youngsters could come in and roller skate. They could have a Coke. They could have a sandwich. They had ballet. Up on the third floor, we had a music school, and we had uh, Graham started eventually uh, on the third floor. She formed what was called an after-school program. She, she quit her job, a job at Manchester School, and, and she came to work, and she formed the after-school program, which is now up and running after 40 years. But the reason we did it was that the children were having difficulty reading the words to music back then. Now, we're talking about a long time ago, because they didn't have homework even back then. I, I asked the parents, if they had their wish, what would they want? And they said they would want their child to read better than they did. So that's how the, the center started. And we started with 30 kids on the third floor, used furniture, books that school board no longer wanted, and that's how it started.